Welcome to our video series introducing Website Creation. In this video, we'll get started with Mozilla Composer. In this set of videos, I'm going to be talking you through how you can be easily up and running creating your own website with software that's entirely free. Even if the subject of creating websites is entirely new to you, I'll be taking you through every single aspect, so previous knowledge isn't necessary. And we'll be going through all the steps, so you don't even need to come from a technical background. Even though some elements of the process can get quite technical, I'll break them down for you so they can be easily duplicated. The first step, of course, is getting the necessary software. And to make things as easy as possible, I'll be using WYSIWYG software. And WYSIWYG, of course, stands for what you see is what you get. For example, Microsoft Word is WYSIWYG. What appears in front of you is generally what gets printed out at the end. There's WYSIWYG software for creating websites. And there are a lot of paid options, such as Microsoft Front Page and Adobe Dreamweaver. And there are plenty of others. But those aren't inexpensive, so I'll be talking you through free options. Particularly, I'll be focusing on the Mozilla free option. But just to give you some other suggestions, there's also NVU, which as they say is pronounced NVU, at nvu.com. And to date, that's been entirely free, so you can download that and try it out if you wish. But I'll be focusing most of these coaching videos on Mozilla Composer. One reason for this is that I find it quite straightforward to use, and it's very similar in many ways to Front Page. Obviously, it's not identical, but many of the elements are very similar. So what you learn in Mozilla Composer can be quite easily transferred at a later stage to Front Page, or perhaps even Dreamweaver, even though Dreamweaver is a lot more involved. It's worth noting that web pages are structured with HTML. And what that actually means is that HTML is effectively the computer language for formatting web pages. If you do view source on any web page, you see the code, the HTML code. And if you aren't familiar with it, it can look a little bit overwhelming. But that's really the benefit of graphical editors such as Mozilla Composer. They hide all the code from you, so that makes creating pages a lot easier and a lot quicker, and you don't need to get involved with all the codes. And also, of course, creating web pages purely by typing in code is a very slow process. And really, it's a completely unnecessary process. At some point, at a later stage, you may want to dive into the code more, because there are definite benefits to being able to understand HTML code and being able to customize certain aspects, certain lines of the code easily. But that's not necessary. Most of what you want to achieve can be done graphically through the WYSIWYG interface in Mozilla Composer. Again, HTML is the language that formats web pages. It's generally behind the scenes unless you want to take a look at it, But of course, as I mentioned, every web page is made up of this. So you could click on View, Source, on any web page, and take a look at this if you wish. OK, Mozilla Composer is actually now, and they may change the name, because they do change the names of their software from time to time. But currently, it's part of SeaMonkey. And SeaMonkey is, as they say, part of an all-in-one Internet application suite. It has web browser, email, newsgroup reader, IRC, and HTML editing, which is what we want. So you have to download this. You have to download the entire thing, and then just use the elements you want. For example, just use the HTML editing element of it. So let's get started with this. I'm going to download this, and I'm going to save it. And I'll save it to the desktop. And it should take a few moments to download. And once it's downloaded, 
I'll continue this video. And OK, it's downloaded and here it is on the desktop. So let's start it up. Double click. And now let's quickly go through the installation process. OK, next, license agreement. OK. Next, which version do we want, or rather what type of setup do we want? I often go with custom, and just to take a look at what the options are, do I want mail and news groups? No, I don't. I can untick that. Do I want spell checker? I may as well leave that because a spell checker might be useful for web pages. So let's leave that. Then chatzilla for chatting on IRC. No thanks. Debugger for debugging JavaScript. OK, I may as well leave that. Inspector, leave that. OK, I've unchecked mail and news groups, but I've left most of the rest. So let's go next. Program folder CMonkey. That's OK. Do I want to add a quick launch icon? No, not at this time. Next. And OK, we're ready to install. And this should take just a couple of minutes. OK, it's all installed, and by default then, it just opens up the browser, the CMonkey browser, and it just goes to this web page at mozilla.org. But what we're interested in, if we go to the Window menu, you can choose Composer. And here's how Composer looks. It looks a bit like Microsoft Word. You have a whole bunch of formatting options here, for example, Smaller font size, larger font size, bold, italic, underline, and so on. And you have some management options here, such as open, save, print, and so on. So we start with a blank page, and I'll just quickly talk you through this part here. OK, it is a blank page, but if we go to HTML source, you see that in HTML, even a blank page requires a little bit of HTML code. So here's the HTML code for what we've created, or in this case, for a blank page. So you can see the code being created at any time by clicking on HTML source here. You can do a preview, display as WYSIWYG, it says here, and displays as in a browser. And I've gone to Preview, and of course we just get a white screen. If we go to the HTML Tags view, and what it tries to display here is a more user-friendly view for HTML. So rather than just showing you all the code, it tries to show you the most relevant tags in graphical format. But generally, you're going to be working in normal view. where you can make additions and changes to your web pages, and they immediately take effect. If we go to Preview, OK, it looks exactly the same. If we go to HTML source, you see it makes some additions to our code. There's the text we just added. So back to normal view, and if you prefer, rather than clicking through the tabs here, you can go to the View menu and you can choose your view there. Preview of view, HTML source view, HTML tags view, or normal edit mode, which we'll generally be in. For example, I can choose that and make it bold, and it immediately becomes bold. And if I go back to HTML source, it's added some extra code so that the formatting option I've chosen will appear properly on the web page. So here, around the text I typed, make additions and changes to your web pages, it's added some code. Style equals bold, effectively. And again, you don't really need to get too involved with this. But just for your reference, HTML deals with tags. These are called tags. A 
essentially an opening bracket and a closing bracket, and everything in between is the tag. Excuse me, not everything in between is the tag. At the start, the opening bracket, that is the tag. For example, this is the span tag. Span, space. Everything after the initial space is attributes. Attributes of the tag. For example, the body tag. That's just got body there within the brackets. And tags generally have a closing tag. So that's the opening tag. So essentially that's saying that the body, the start of the body of the web page, is here. And here is forward slash body. That's the closing body tag. That's saying that the end of the body of the web page is there. And you can only have content that appears on the web page within the body tags. But again, that's all taken care of for you in Composer. So here we have the span tag. Span, space, and a whole bunch of attributes basically saying make the following text bold until we reach the closing span tag here. So tags generally come in pairs, and they apply changes to whatever is in between the opening and closing tags. Okay, this tag doesn't come in a pair. It can just be by itself. It's the break tag, and it basically just adds a line return. It's the same as, okay, let's go back to normal view. It's the same as pressing enter there. Press enter a couple of times, and when I go back to HTML source view, you see we have a couple of extra break tags. Okay, back to normal view. And that's a very quick introduction to Composer and how you can get started creating web pages and an introduction to what HTML is and how the changes you make to your pages immediately affect the HTML code of your page. Because HTML is, of course, the language that formats your page and really holds it all together, really. The HTML code is what the web browser, such as Internet Explorer, when you visit any web page, your browser quickly views the HTML code of the page, translates it, and then presents it in visual format to you for web browsing.